Greetings, my fellow Fright Beans. It's your buddy Boogeyman Ben here for a new episode of Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. And this video is a video that I wanted to do a lot sooner than I am. Um, last weekend, um, another horror legend uh, left us. And um, this one was really a tough one for me to take um, because he directed what I feel is the most important film. Um, it's the most important film in my life, and it is my favorite horror film of all time. But not only that, his imp his mark on the genre um, is unmatched, and uh, he's created films that will live on and characters that will live on for, for forever. And um, the fact that I never got to meet him, uh, the fact that uh, he passed away in a year where we've lost so many greats, it just makes it that much harder to deal with the fact that as horror fans and as lovers of the genre, the icons that we've grown up with are going to leave us. Of course, I'm talking about the uh, great Toby Hooper, who passed away on August the 26th at the age of 74. Last I read, he died of natural causes. Um, but this, this has just been a shitty year. We've lost so many fantastic people this year. I mean, I can't believe the amount of celebrities that we've lost this year. People that have had huge impacts on my life. And Toby Hooper has had a huge impact on my life. I mean, just to name some of the films that he's done, um, of course, how can you say anything but great things about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I mean, this film is fantastic, iconic, uh, the creation of the character of Leatherface, one of the most seminal and iconic horror films ever made. You know, it just, but this film is just fantastic. And uh, along with that film, another favorite of mine that Hooper directed was The Fun House, a film that doesn't get talked about very much, but I absolutely love this film. Really, really great film, very scary. One of the first horror films I ever actually saw in the movie theater, and I think I was about seven or eight when this movie came out, and I remember going to see this film and being terrified by the creature in this, uh, Gunther, I believe is how you call him, but uh, excellent, excellent film. Absolutely love The Fun House. Um, of course, you can't talk about Texas Chainsaw 1 without Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. A film that grew on me, but I've grown to love it more over the years, especially because of uh, Bill Mosley's performance as Chop Top and the lovely Carolyn Williams as Stretch. But this film has grown on me. Um, for the longest time, I had a hard time with it because it was so different. It was more of a dark comedy when compared with the original. But I love what Hooper did. He just reinvented it, made it different, and uh, I commend him 100% for it. And then, of course, Poltergeist. Um, I know a lot of people say that you know this was Spielberg's film, but I still feel that Toby Hooper directed this film. You can call me naive, but that's how I feel. This is still an iconic film, and because of this film is so great and one that I grew up watching quite a bit on HBO when I was a kid, I have never seen the remake and never planned to. Um, but the film for me that uh, that uh, Toby Hooper will always be best known for, even above Texas Chainsaw Massacre, is the one and only Salem's Lot. Um, Salem's Lot is is like my old friend. Um, I've talked about Salem's Lot many times before. Um, over the years, I've done many videos about Salem's Lot, uh, but Salem's Lot has, holds a very near dear place in my heart. It is my favorite horror film of all time. I would put it above the Friday the 13th, the Psychos, all of them. I just, this film was the first film that ever terrified me. Just for me, there's so many iconic moments in Salem's Lot. You have the, the Glick boys outside the, the bedroom windows. You have Mike Ryerson in the rocking chair. Of course, Reggie Nalder as Barlow. Um, these images will are, are ingrained in culture now. People know this stuff. I mean, it's really, really terrifying scene. Um, but yeah, I mean, not only did this film give me the biggest scare that I can remember ever having as a kid, um, but then it became an obsession with me. I just obsessed over this film. I watched it constantly growing up. I got it to the point where my dad was so infuriated with me because I watched it every Saturday morning. I didn't watch cartoons. I watched this film that they had taped for me off of HBO. It was the two-hour version of this. Even though I haven't seen the movie version of this in years, I do remember they cut a big chunk of it out because it was only two hours or maybe an hour and 45 minutes. So a lot of the character exposition was gone. Um, but this is the definitive version of it, the miniseries or the full-length movie. But, yeah, it's just... Those scenes are just so fucking scary. I mean, still to this day... Um, those scenes are terrifying and it is a slow building movie but the thing that works so well about Salem's Lot is that it's a character developed story you have so many different characters and Hooper gives e equal amount of time to so many of them that you grow to care for them and then these horrific events happen um, but everybody in this film is fantastic the ensemble that Hooper got together for this film 
is just amazing with James Mason, Eliza Cook Jr., Lou Ayers, um, Kenneth McMillan, George, uh, Jeffrey Lewis, David Soul. I mean, you just have a, and uh, Bonnie Bedelia, uh, Marie Windsor. All of these actors and actresses are fantastic. And of course, who can say, who can't say enough great things about Reggie Nalder as Barlow, which I still think is one of the most terrifying, is, I'm going to say it is the most terrifying vampire ever captured on film. It just it's a film where every element for me works. Um, I absolutely love this film. I have it. I, I still have my VHS tapes of it. I still have it on DVD, and I got this Blu-ray last year, which is fantastic, and I will be watching today um, in memory of Mr. Hooper. But I just want to thank Toby Hooper, wherever he is now, because this film is just... It's it, like I said. It's just it's iconic to me, and it's something that I really I think with Toby Hooper's passing, and my love for Salem's Lot, there's something I want to do around Salem's Lot. Something that I've been working on, and I've just been thinking about some project that I want to work on, and I want to do something revolving around Salem's Lot. And I'm not trying to turn this to something about me, but the realization that these greats are leaving us. You know, we lost, you know, Wes Craven two years ago. We just lost George Romero. We lost Toby Hooper. Um, you know, these people made me the horror fan that I am today. Uh, they helped make me love the genre. And they are, were fantastic filmmakers. They were smart. They knew good stories. They knew how to tell a story. Um, they knew how to scare us. And, uh, I want to do something with, you know, I want to do something, you know, the genre is important to me. And, you know, I have this video channel and I love what I do here, but there's so much more I feel I could be doing. And there's so much more I can give than just doing these videos every so often. And I want to do something around my favorite horror film of all time in that sounds like. And the passing of Toby Hooper has really helped open my eyes to what I can do and what I'm capable of doing. So I don't want to talk too much about it because it's still very, very conceptual. But um, I am going to do something. And I'm really excited for, the, for what I think is going to materialize from this inspiration that I've gotten. And uh, like I said, this is, you know, I, I, I love Toby Hooper. I love what he's contributed to the genre. I'm saddened that he's gone. But the legacy that he has left with just Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Salem's Lot alone, it, his memory will last and last and last. And, ev and new people are discovering these films every year. Toby Hooper was a masterful filmmaker, and he will be sorely missed. And I'm really saddened that he's gone, um, but I am so grateful for the fact that he made this film. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Funhouse and all of the things he contributed to the horror genre, and I will miss him very much. And if anybody else uh, wants to share their thoughts about Toby Hooper, please leave them in the comments section below. I would love to hear what everyone has to say about this masterful filmmaker that we unfortunately lost a week ago. Um, and I want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this video. And always remember, you can do nothing against the master.